guys welcome back to my channel and so today we are going to or i am going to share with you the capslet of grade 10 week 4.1 and 4.2 so 4.1 is the direct and indirect signals by or written by Geronima g oyales and capslet 4 english 10 4.2 which is the persuasive essay written by marites herrera so yes let's do it so today we are going to talk about the English 10 quarter 1 week 4.1 So our objectives or I mean our topic for this week 4 is direct and indirect signals okay so our objectives for this week are the following. Discuss direct and indirect signals used in the song. Distinguish explicit from implicit signals. And then analyze the meaning of the lines or phrases. Okay. So moving on. Understand. Have you ever been told by someone to read between the lines? What do you think does the person mean? What does he or she want you to do? The person is encouraging you to try to figure out what's going on when things are not obvious and think critically of what is meant by something that is not directly stated. However, you don't need to figure out something if it is evident or stated directly in a text. In this lesson, we will discuss what it means to state something explicitly and implicitly. What are direct or explicit and indirect or implicit signals? Okay, here is the comparison between the two. Okay. For direct or explicit signals, they are something made clear and stated plainly. While indirect or implicit, something is implied and not stated directly. Direct or explicit signals easy to understand, precisely and clearly expressed, or readily observable, leaves nothing to implicate, denotes the report of the exact words of an author or speaker. While when we say indirect or implicit signals, these are not directly expressed, inherent in the nature of something, and it usually denotes something that was said or written rather than the exact words that were spoken or written. So next, read or listen to this song, Let It Go, from the movie Frozen. Okay, I'm sure everybody knows this song. So I will read to you the song, uh, the, the lyrics of the song. Uh, rather the snow glows white on the mountain tonight not a footprint to be seen a kingdom of isolation and it looks like i'm the queen the wind is howling like the swirling storm inside couldn't give it in heaven knows i tried don't let them in don't let them see be the good girl you always have to be Conceal, don't feel, don't let them know. Well, now they know. Let it go, let it go. Can't hold it back anymore. Let it go, let it go. Turn away and slam the door. I don't care what they're going to say. Let the storm rage on. The cold never bothered me anyway. So these are the lyrics of the song. I'm sure everybody is familiar with this song. So in this song, the writer uses explicit and implicit signals to highlight significant points. Or these are the examples of explicit signals. 
the snow glows white on the mountain tonight. Meaning, it describes the snow as seen on the mountain. Don't let them in, don't let them see. Be the good girl you always have to be. Conceal, don't feel, don't let them know. Meaning, she hides and will not reveal her identity. So, example of implicit signals. It's time to see what I can do. Meaning, it implies rebellion against rules or culture. The wind is howling like swirling storm inside. Couldn't keep it in. Heaven knows I tried. Meaning, inner turmoil or confusion and failure to control herself. So read the lyrics of the song and enjoy its melody. Then do this activity below. So how are you going to answer the SAQ1 for this uh, week 4.1 directions read the statements below then check that are those that are good effects of explicit and implicit signals to the song and mark x for those that are not so these are five items so a b c d and e what you are going to do on your yellow pad paper you write first english 10 quarter one Week 4.1 and then direct and indirect signals and then you can already write A, B, C, D. Your answer should be check or a wrong mark. Okay, next. SAQ2. Choose the letter of the correct answer. So this time, you are going to choose only the letter of the correct answer. So these are two items. Number one question. What explicit meaning does the let it go convey? So A, to set free of what she was keeping for so long or what was kept for so long. B, to be hesitant to move freely. C, to be curious of what she is really. D, to relax and wait for the right moment. So if your answer is D, then you can only write only the letter of the correct answer. Do not anymore copy everything. Again, to all the students, do not write any everything. Do not copy everything. SAQ1, answer right away, 1 to 5. SAQ2, answer right away, 1 and 2. So later I will give you the, um, I will give you later how you are going to answer the, uh, how are you going to write the answers. Okay? So for let's practice, uh, write X if the meaning of the lines Write the word X, huh? E, X, if the meaning of the lines are explicitly stated and I am or I'm if they are or im if they are implicit, okay? So that is only one of two five items. So let it go, let it go, can hold it back anymore. What do you think? Is it an X or an im? So write only the... Uh, the X or the M on your test or on your answer sheets. Okay, so for remember, explicit or direct information is any idea that is stated. With explicit information, you see the text explained. There is no need to look for clues. While the implicit or indirect information is understood, but it is not stated. To find implicit information in what is read, you will have to think what you read. Look for clues as you read. Implicit information is not written, but the idea is there. Okay? So the last but not the least is try. Read the passages and answer the questions about the text. And circle the letter of your choice. Answer on the on your yellow pad paper. So this is only one of to five items. So for number one, if your if your answer is letter A, then you only write letter A. Okay? So that is it for 
grade 10, quarter 1, week 4.1. Okay, so I hope you understood that one. So for those uh, capsules that are not uh, really clear, okay, so you may use this one as your guide. So you can listen to the song if you have a data or you have a signal of your Wi-Fi connection. You can uh, listen to this ano, music, the song Let It Go by Idina Menzel. Okay. That's it. That's it. So that is uh, English 10, quarter 1, week 4.1. So, let's move to English 10, quarter 1, week 4.2 by Marites Pino Herrera. Okay, so for week 4.2, pers our topic is the persuasive essay. So, use words, phrases, and expressions to emphasize a point in writing a three-paragraph persuasive essay. So, for these objectives, familiarize the different parts of a persuasive essay and arrange logically scrambled paragraphs to come up with a coherent, coherent, sorry, persuasive essay. So, do not write anything on this material. Write your answers on your yellow paper, your yellow pad. So, topic is persuasive essay. What is an essay? An essay is a sort of writing that usually demonstrates the author's position, personal view, or research of a certain topic. It is a non-fictional type of writing and sometimes includes narrative and subjective thoughts. The essay varies from observations of daily life, literature, critics, and author's reflections to political analysis and scientific research. There are different types of essays, one of which is the persuas persuasive essay. What is a persuasive essay? A persuasive essay, also known as an argumentative essay, is a piece of academic writing where you use logic <clears throat> and reason to show that your point of view is more legitimate than any other. You must expose clear arguments and support them with convincing facts and logical reasons. Basics, basic parts of the persuasive essay, number one, is the introduction. In the introduction, you should present a hook here that grabs your audience attention you should also provide your thesis statement which is a clear statement that you will argue or attempt to convince the reader second is the body or body paragraphs you can have as many paragraphs as you need to make your arguments each body paragraph needs to focus on one main idea and provide evidence to support it and the last part is the conclusion. Your conclusion is where you tie it all together. It can include an appeal to emotions, reiterate the most compelling evidence, or expand the relevance of your initial idea to a broader context. Your purpose is to persuade your readers to do or think something and with a call of action. So these are the strong words and phrases for persuasive writing. So introductory phrases are the following. In my opinion, from where I stand, there is no doubt that in my point of view, I question whether and it is clear that. So concluding phrases, we have, as you can see, in my event, for the reasons above, on the whole, to be sure, obviously, undoubtedly, without a doubt, in any case, in summary, in other words. And then for supporting opinions, first, second, third, in addition, equally important, furthermore, in the first place, moreover, besides, similarly, also. For introducing details, you have, for example, as evidence, in fact, in support of this, for instance, examples include cause and effect, you have if then, 
uh, due to consequently then compare and contrast similarly although on the contrary compared to counter argument i realize you i although you i question i understand so remember you have everything you need to come up with a persuasive essay for you to make it the best follow some steps here's how you can write a short but compelling essay okay so when we say uh, compelling it means ano uh, convincing essay okay so number one is choose a subject address the audience three clarify your purpose four write a draft five use an interesting question quotation and anecdote for introduction and then revise and polish so for saq1 which of the following is not a characteristic of a persuasive essay? So, you choose the correct answer. Okay? So, for this, uh, for this week, you are only to answer the let's try and the let's practice. Okay? That is what you are going to write on your um, yellow paper. Don't worry, I will later on give to you how you are going to answer it or write it on your yellow paper. So, for let's practice, this is what you are going to do. Read the sample essay below and answer the questions that follow. Practice and uphold positive attitude by Lee M. Okay. So, there are questions that follow. So, what you are going to do is do not anymore, again, do not anymore copy all the questions, answer right away. So, for your answer, for let's practice, A, B, C, okay, only A, B, C. So, choose from letters A, B, or C, okay? So, multiple choice test. So, write that on your yellow pad. So, for the key points, don't forget, a persuasive essay has three basic parts introduction body and conclusion in every paragraph there should only be one main idea okay you can use the strong words or phrases and expressions to emphasize your point or persuade readers to agree with you okay so that are, those are the key points so you can use these words here okay these words okay the strong words and phrases for um, persuasive writing, which are the introductory phrases, concluding phrases, supporting opinions, introducing details, cause and effect, compare and contrast, counter argument. Okay, lastly. So these are the words you are going to use. Okay, going back. These are the words you are going to use to emphasize your point or you persuade the readers to agree with you okay so another last but not the least is the let's try La try so answer on your yellow pad let's see how much you have learned so directions logically organis logical organization arrange and rewrite the following scrambled paragraphs to develop a coherent persuasive essays oh i get i mean essay rather write your answers below so what you are going to do here is to uh, arrange logically these five paragraphs so what do you think should go first okay and then label them from one up to five one from the beginning then five to the last paragraph okay and then five points for each paragraph here you have to write the introduction okay based from this aggressive driving should be avoided so first you are going to logically organize the paragraph okay or put the correct order of this five paragraphs then after that you are going to write here your answer remember we have we are going to grade or give you five points per paragraph so what could be the introduction and then your body last is the conclusion okay 
So, that's it for the English 10 week 4.2. That it, that's it guys so don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel for more videos thank you so much bye god bless you